So I mentioned in the previous video, I picked up Dio Dumps, uh, their small chicken coop just to go in the corner of the model, sit next to the farmhouse. Um, just comes in four uh, resin parts and a couple of bits of corrugated metal. Um, and these just simply sit on the top like so for the roof. Um, I've also got the little box that goes on the side, but because of um, the size and where this is going to go, it'll have to go on the back, but that's not a problem. And then to go with the chicken coop, I picked up another set of Tamiya's livestock. Um, they're 135 set um, because really I need the chickens, some chickens for the coop. Um, and I might also use um, the geese as well. There's a couple of geese here um, and probably the dog as well. So altogether, that's, uh, that's going to add some more detail.
just wanted to take a quick break to share and recommend with you um, a new publication I've just picked up recently um, that's centred around the Battle of Hungary during the late stages of World War II. So this book's a little different in that it contains some information on the history during this time, uh, as well as dioramas. Uh, the book's broken down into a number of chapters, with each chapter um, describing an event such as a battle or a period of time, uh, using text and photographs, and then there's a model a diorama based on that event with the relevant vehicles, uh, the divisional markings, uniforms, etc., uh, even right down to the weather conditions at the time. Some of the dioramas can be seen in other publications such as this one, but most were new to me uh, with loads of scratch building and techniques involved, which really helps with new ideas and gives you some inspiration. One thing though, it definitely isn't, is a step-by-step -step guide showing a process of every build from start to finish. But it does have some excellent techniques and products used and how-tos, which for me makes it one of the nicest diorama books I've got. So that's it really, just a really quick review, but I just wanted to uh, share with you and recommend this um, with all its large scale colour photographs um, and a special interest if you, if you like modelling subjects from the Eastern Front. Um, it's really well presented and given with that little bit of historical accuracy and, colour, and the photographs as well, just makes each model uh, just that little bit more powerful. Um, be nice if they repeated the idea perhaps with something like uh, the Battle of uh, Berlin or maybe from D-Day. Um, but this book in itself is, uh, is really nice.
So that's it for part three. It's been a while since the last video, but I've got to where I want to be with this one now and hopefully it won't be so long until the last one. Uh, this video has just mainly been about, as you've seen, getting the accessories and the details ready and painted uh, without so much working on the base itself. Um, and all that's left to do in the last video is just to finish off the mobile wagon. Um, I'm going to use some of Vallejo's thick mud I've used before in previous projects. It's a really nice product. Uh, just to add to the groundwork, uh, to bed everything in, like the vehicles and the figures and the ammunition boxes, etc. Uh, I'll finish off the grass in front of the, the fence and then start adding the figures and the animals and the other, all the other details. Plus, I'm going to scratch build a door for the main farmhouse itself, like I did with the garage doors, um, just to add a little bit more detail instead of using the ones from the, the kit from the house. Uh, don't forget, you can uh, keep up to date on my Instagram page. Plus, I've also got a Facebook page now with similar updates, as well as some new product recommendations. Uh, and all that's left to say is thanks for watching. Um, hope you enjoyed. All comments and thoughts, always welcome. Uh, leave a like if you did, and I'll see you back for the final video soon.